In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to hide the WordPress theme name, the WordPress plugin names, how to rename all the folders like the includes folder, the wp-admin folder, themes folder, plugins folder, uploads folders. So essentially what's going to happen after you've done everything I show you in this tutorial, your website will become invisible to people who don't know it's WordPress. So they've tried to find out if your site is WordPress and what you're running on your site, they have a very, very hard time figuring it out. It won't be impossible, but they'll have a very hard time. I'm going to show you how to do all this. We're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help change lives by teaching WordPress and giving you the ability to up your skills and earn more money for yourself and your family. And if you like that kind of thing, you like WordPress and tips and tricks and getting better at it, make sure you hit subscribe, then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And make sure you check out our private Facebook group. There's a link in the description down below. With that out of the way, let's head into the screen capture. I'll see you there. So the holy grail of being able to hide your WordPress site is to use something like what is what WP theme is that and have it tell you this is not a WordPress site. So right now, I'm going to put in the URL for my demo site, which is this right here, and search. And it pulls up my child theme details correctly. It pulls in plugins that I have going on, or actually the parent theme here, and then plugins down below. And all that is legitimate. That's actually what's running on the site. And now, our goal by the end of this tutorial is to have none of that show up. In fact, have this website tell us it's not a WordPress site. To do this, we are going to first install a plugin. So go to plugins, then add new, then go to or search for WP hide and security. And the one we want is this one right here. It's tested with the current version. A lot of good reviews, a lot of installs. If you haven't backed up your site yet, make sure you back it up. As a tutorial link to in the description down below to help you do that if you need help. It's called Updraft Plus is the plugin used for that. But if you're ready to install it, click on install now then click on activate. And right now, nothing has changed. We just installed a new plugin. So we have to do some settings here. WP hide is a new menu item that we have. So let's click on WP hide. And there are a lot of things we can change in here. And it takes very few of them to hide your WordPress site, but there's a lot more you can actually do. Uh, we're just going to cover the ones that hide your WordPress site and talk about the others a little bit. And before we get started, understand that all the changes you make here, go into your HT access file. And your HT access file is a very important file. Something goes wrong in there, your website is going to go down. If you want to be extra safe, you make a backup of your HT access file before you start doing this. To do that, log in to your hosting account, the cPanel, and either do it through uh, cPanel or FTP if you're more comfortable in FTP. I'm just going to go into the file manager inside cPanel. I'm going to go to public underscore HTML. I'm going to find my HT access file, which is right here. I am going to right click on it, then click copy. And I'm just going to name this HT access backup. And now we have an exact duplicate of our file. So if something goes wrong, we can just revert back to the old one. So let's get started. Let's add a new path to our theme. So I'm going to type in here, I'm just going to call this JavaScripts. Before I save that, let's go to the live site and let's view the source code. If we right click anywhere on a blank area, click on view page source. If we search for WP content forward slash themes, we can find a lot of theme information. And this is how sites like what WordPress theme is this operate. They, they look for indicators like this, which all WordPress sites have. So in, inside the themes are the 2017 child theme, we have 2017 assets, we have 2017 assets up here, we have a bunch of others, more 2017 assets in here. So by changing this, we are changing this path. And just to show you that in more detail, I'm just gonna save this, actually show it to you live because otherwise it's difficult to explain. So if I come back out here, and if when I refresh this page, which I won't just a second, these file paths are going to change. So we'll keep your eye right here on all this yellow and orange. Refresh the page source. Now it says JavaScripts forward slash assets. You can no longer find WP content forward slash themes. It's gone. If we go back out to here and we refresh this page 
and we try to investigate the theme on this website, it now says WordPress was detected, but no theme details could be determined. So we have, at this point, from these automated tools, successfully hidden our theme. Somebody who's really poking around could still go in here. They could find style.css, for example. Here's a child theme style, so you click on there and possibly identify what theme it is. No, it looks like it's blocked, page not found. That's good. Uh, and also uh, to note is it's also changed the path to the child theme. So we changed our parent theme path from wp-content forward slash themes to just JavaScripts. And now the child theme path is JavaScripts dash child. And the CSS is blocked from front end users. So the next thing we want to do, if we go, we can set a new style file path if we want to here. It's not necessary for hiding your theme, but you can do it if you want. The child theme, we can rename the child theme here. We could call this my scripts, for example. And just for good measure, I'll, I'll change the CSS files as well. You do have to clear cache if you need to. So if you find the changes aren't taking effect, clear cache. Click on save. And now if I refresh, keep an eye on URLs like this that reference your child theme. This should now change to my scripts. So now it says my scripts forward slash scripts dash js dot CSS. This is very different than it was before. Before it was referencing a child theme CSS file, but now we've renamed it and kind of hidden it. In the ID, however, for the style sheet ID, it's still there. If someone knows WordPress, they know that 2017 is a WordPress thing. Although 2017 could be anything, it's just a year, right? But anyway, you can still find in the ID. So now if we head over to WP includes, let's see if we can hide our site completely from that automated scanner. So I'm going to change the includes path. It's going to call it PHP includes. Click on save. Uh, let's look for WP includes in here. WP includes. So this is uh, WP includes is the WP core folder. You usually don't play around in there as a regular user. However, it is an indicator that this is a WordPress site, especially the WP kind of gives it away. Now if we refresh, keep an eye on the yellows and that one orange, and they will be renamed to PHP includes. All of a sudden, this could be any kind of website. So now let's go to WP content. Let's change it to PHP assets. Click on save, come back out here, search for WP content. There are 33 instances of WP content. So keep an eye on all these yellows. This is a folder you're probably familiar with as a WordPress user. This is where the plugins go, this is where your file uploads go, this is where your themes go, all your images, things like that. And I'm going to refresh this in just a second, and we're going to see a different URL here. Now they are called PHP underscore assets, no longer WP dash content. So if we go back to our little theme detector here and our, our WordPress detector, refresh this page, let's search or scan our site again, and something magical just happened. It says that this site does not appear to be a WordPress site. So automated scanners have now been fooled, at least this one has. But if you are uh, dealing with somebody who's a little more inquisitive, a little more curious, a little more able, they can still look at the source code and they can find references to things that are clearly WordPress. For example, up here, we have a reference to our file path to plugins forward slash Gutenberg, which is a WordPress thing. Gutenberg is a lot of other things too. It was a human being at some point, uh, but that might be an indicator it's a WordPress site. And over here we have uploads and Elementor. Elementor is clearly a WordPress plugin. It's a WordPress only plugin. So likely this is a WordPress website. And we also have all these IDs to deal with over here, which reference those same things. Inside the plugin, which we'll check in just a minute, we can actually rename each of these plugin folders as well. So we've hidden ourselves from, from scanners. We just need to hide ourselves from more intense snoopers that go and view your source code and comb through all the information there. Let's head over here and then click on plugins. And in here, we can change the path to the plugins. So as we've been changing our path to WP includes and WP content, we can change the path for WP plugins or WP content forward slash plugins, I should say. 
And then we can actually change the names of the folders for each individual plugin we have installed in the site. So on this site, there's WP Time Capsule. We can change the URL for that. And the right here it says my underscore plugins forward slash module. What we're actually changing is the module component. If we add a URL up in here that's called something else, like let's just call this, for lack of something else, super duper, and then change this module to number one. And then this one, let's make that number two. And I want to find the Elementor one, number three, because that one's very prominent on the front end. Elementor Pro, number four. All the rest I'm not going to change because you get the idea. Go down to the bottom, click on Save, and then come back out here. Let's just search for forward slash plugins Elementor, and we have 16. And here we have Uploads Elementor as well, but let's just deal with the plugins first. So we have 16 entries for that. And this URL should change when I refresh this page. So keep an eye on the yellows and that one orange. And it's now changed to just number four. So what I said earlier was a lie when I said that it took that plugin piece. So I thought it was going to say super duper forward slash number four, but it's not. It's replacing the whole plugin path with number four. And here's number three. And so those are now hidden. The IDs are still there. So I want to see if we can get rid of those. And there's also some other stuff. So if we go back into the plugin area and then click on uploads, here we can change the path to our uploads folder. If we go back to our source code, we can see for Elementor, there's some uploads in the uploads folder under Elementor. So if we change this to, let's change this one to super duper. No, super awesome. Obviously, I wouldn't use something like this, but my first few were quite good where I named it after JavaScript and things like that. These ones are less good, but you'll figure something out. So I come back out here. Let's just search for uploads forward slash Elementor. So we have some highlighting here. Watch these yellow and orange entries when I click refresh. It now says super awesome here. It still says Elementor in the subpath. I'm not sure if we can fix that. Let's go take a look. So if we head over to the other settings. There's more here. I'm not going to go through every one, like I said, but they all work the same way. You're basically just renaming file paths. So if we head over to general slash HTML under the WP hide menu, and then if we click on styles, and this area is more yes and no, and then you save it. Now let's try remove ID from link tags. Click on save. And now if that worked how I expect it to, we should be able to remove these IDs from the link tags. So let's just search for this. So again, we can just look at the yellow ones. So when I refresh, all of these should be gone. So let's give that a go. Refresh. So now it's even harder to determine if this site is WordPress or not, even if you go and sift through it manually. And there's a lot of settings in that plugin that we didn't cover. We covered most of the ones where we changed the file paths. In the section where we're currently in, where we discovered these IDs, there's a bunch of yes and no questions where we can remove certain elements from the source code. And I encourage you to go through each one of those. And when something goes wrong, which it might, you can reset all the work you've done. So before we do that, actually, let's head into our file manager. We have it open over here, actually. So our HT access file is where all the edits are happening. So our original was 2.73 kilobytes in size. Now our HD access file is 3.71. So we've added a lot of material in there. Let's highlight that, click on edit, and we will see a section. If I get this a little bigger, we'll see a section in here called, ah, right here, begin WP hide and end WP hide. So I think, I haven't tried this yet, but I think I can just remove all this so let's just cut that, save changes. Now I'm going to try deleting the plugin and see if I can just put the HT access code back into here and have all our WordPress stuff hidden again so we can save our extra vulnerability and extra load time from having a plugin and we can possibly still have the same effect. Before I do that, I wanted to show you how you can reset everything if something goes wrong. On every page, there's a reset all settings button. It's half hidden here on mine, but if you click on that, and then click Save Changes, 
it resets everything in the plugin back to default. And now I'm going to go to plugins. I'm going to delete this plugin. I'm going to deactivate it. And then delete it. And now if we go back to what theme is this and search again, everything should be visible again as we had before or initially when we started. So we can see our themes and our plugins again. Everything's back to how it was before we had that plugin. Now let's go into our HTAccess file and paste that HTAccess code back in and see what happens. This is my demo site, so I'm not too scared of what's gonna happen. But you might not wanna do this on the production site. You might wanna have a staging site for this. Let's search again and it still finds everything. So there is something that the plugin is doing that isn't just as simple as having an HD access file. Let's refresh the source code and see if our number three and four and super awesome go away. And they do. So the plugin is doing something else besides just what I copied in the HD access file here. I can't see anything else that relates to that plugin specifically. So you do need the plugin, unless you're an HD access wizard, which I'm not. But if you are, then you could find a way to probably adapt this to not use the plugin but I'm not a wizard in here. But either way, that plugin and that process we just did is how we can hide our sites first from these automated scanners and then from prying eyes that check out our source code. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit subscribe and the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Check out our Facebook group, link in the description. And next, click one of these videos that popped up on the right-hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.